Put this in. Um, right. Do we have audio? La 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 la. Excellent. Okay, let's put the audio down. We don't want feedback. And do the music credits. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gents. Today we have another house tour, and it's one of mine. So, bear with me while I sort out these music credits, because it's always nice to thank your, uh, the dude that made your playlist. So as you can see, we are on Polish's Many Spears, her favourite Argonian healer, with a sideline in Necromancy. And we are at the Varley Vale Healing Shrine. Have you ever been barred by PvP? Smackdown one time too many in Harrowstorms. Dragons in Southern Elsewhere left you a little bit toasty. You need somewhere to just come and uh, soak away those like injuries, somewhere to heal. Varlevi has the place. This mostly intact Iliad ruin contains some wonderful healing pills that are maintained by a staff of volunteers to get you back into fighting fitness. The ruins to the left of us are mostly extraneous and serve no purpose. Coming down the stairs you will see our security personnel, the Solitude Guard John. John makes sure no one misbehaves. And here we have a le the legacy of the prior owners, a clan of alien elves who would no doubt be dismayed to find that their construction was shoddy. Still, if you build on the coast, then you are going to get many, many ruins. We proceed into the entrance. We find an alien gate that's remarkably intact. And was not destroyed by years and years of exposure to salt air. Over here we have an area where pilgrims can repair their gear and brew po potions or uh, something similar. Proceeding into the te uh, te uh, temple itself, we'll just shadow Jorn for this little bit. And here we have Izabi and Fizez. They will happily help you shift your inventory and convert your currency for a small fee. Watch out for Izabi. She may or may not fudge the numbers in her own uh, favour. Proceeding past the first of the Alien Dollars, we are coming up on the central healing pool. This is where the Iliad crystal magic has worked its most uh, spectacular wonders. It has spontaneously generated flowers. Careful observation will also note that the prior the builders of this place somehow managed to suspend a sky shard above the pool. Many scholars speculate that this is why the pool retains its healing qualities long, long, long after the Varla stones should have been drained. Emerging from the pool, feeling slightly refreshed, we 
we head to the chapel where Acolyte Deris is preaching the lessons of the Eight Divines and the Altmer Gods. He's a very devoted gentleman. He spends three minutes praying at the altar and three minutes preaching. And as you can see, we have a donation plate here. Donations are not mandatory, but are very well, uh, very well uh, received. And as you can see, Deris keeps the altar very well lit, and the incense coming. Probably look at these uh, pillars. Over here we have the Shrine to Magnus and the Shrine to Cerebin. Excuse us, Acolyte. And over here we have the Shrine to Ifri and the Shrine to Trinimac. We did consider putting candles down and incense, however, that would outshine the eight divines, and we really don't want to do that. So, proceeding upwards to the next level, we will encounter the library. Here we have a vast amount of books with techniques on healing. Herbalism, crystal therapy, the schools of restoration. And here we have Biro Dar cataloguing them for future use. Perhaps he'll be the first one to invent the Tamriel equivalent of the Dewey Decimal System. At any rate, it's nice to see he's not uh, swindling people out of their coin and not robbing their libraries blind anymore. Coming out onto the terrace, we have a kitchen and dining area where one can enjoy the view of the ocean and the Iliad ruins. And our very patient waitress, Keldora, is making the rounds. She's just on her break the, uh, now. And over here we have Makes Many Soups tending her cauldrons because, as her name suggests, she likes to make many soups. Let's have a little chat with her. I found some wonderfully ripe and sun-blessed roots along with a few ooze-worthy maggots. Also some fermented pot scum. Yum. Oh, pick up your spoon and eat your soup. It's perfectly delicious. Uh, no, I don't think so, dear. You are my sister, Argonian, and I love you, but we're not doing that. So once again, this is a voluntary service in the chapel. Healing wounded adventurers, you know, just doing what you can to mitigate the disasters of the endless conflict and strife in Tamriel. Heading up from the public library, we head to the private library, which is primarily for the use of visiting scholars and uh, live-in staff. We used Alinor Construction to partition these uh, this room off and give us some. Uh, very much needed private space. The library is very well stocked as one can see and on the other side of this fully closable Iliad gate we have the private quarters for the residents. The observant among you will note that there are four beds in here and there are five staff members. It's going to be up to you to decide who sleeps where. Most interesting theory will get a cookie. 
This uh, only applies to Xbox any people though, because you know, I can't uh, send stuff to PC. Over here we have some little clarity items that I've amassed over the years. Just, you know, little knickknacks that may have been uh, sentimental value to the staff. Some more books. Alas, periodic we knew him well. Replica dragon horn. And a few more knickknacks. After exiting the private quarters, we head on up to the rooftop terrace. Where the real healing starts. Because, as you will see, there are three more pools blessed with alien light wells. Constantly energized by the magic of flowing it from Ethereus. Pools of healing. The central pool is most commonly used. We've got some lovely colourful Eleanor trees that are benefiting from the residual magic of the pills. The planters were interesting to do. And of course over here we have the two other pills. Again, with their magically suffused trees. This pool is the same depth as the other one, but it has like a much better view. Whereas this pool over here is where you come when you are really, really weak. You start off in the shallow end and you slowly progress to the deep end as and when you feel capable. This is for those with like uh, severe leg injuries or atrophy. Rehabilitation style. And of course after your treatment you can sit down on one of these functional, although not entirely comfortable, alien benches and watch the sun rise or set. Although, seeing as we're facing west, it will be sunsetting. This place is complete, and we have 50 slots left for future shrines to the Divines, or Aldmeri um, Proto-Gods, or oh, what's the word? The Elmofake. Yes, this has been the healing shrine of Varley Vale. It was a fairly simple build because it came with a lot of the stuff that we used in it. We just uh, reordered things and implemented some more. It's nothing terribly fancy, but it does make me happy that I managed to do something with this because originally I was completely unsure as to whether we'd buy this house or not. But we did and this is what we've done with it. We have turned Varlevia into a healing shrine for the injured. So to all those weary souls who need to recover, get yourself into a healing pool and let all your cares and worries suck away. And remember, you can always just chill and watch the sunset if you want to. This has been the healing shrine of Varley Vale and I hope anyone watching has enjoyed it. And I will catch you later. Peace out, my people.